Welcome to Binary Ninja Basics. These videos have been recorded out of our weekly live streams to give you a quick overview of Binary Ninja. So this week's Binary Ninja Basics is gonna be on patching files, all the ways that you can modify things with Binary Ninja. And this is actually one of my favorite topics. I wrote a blog post on it actually a couple of years ago because there's a lot of ways to patch in Binary Ninja. And I think a lot of people don't realize how many there actually are. All right, so let's open challenge1.elf and let's run challenge1.elf. So this is a very, very simple binary. Oh, that's interesting, right? So I ran it a bunch, I gave it a bunch of input, and then until I typed a number, nothing happens. So it looks like it's scanning for some sort of number. And then if you get the number right, you succeed. And if you get it wrong, you fail. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to patch this binary. I'd like to make it always succeed. There's a lot of reasons you might want to patch a binary. Maybe you're fixing a bug. Maybe you're got a CTF binary and you're trying to patch out the fork or the drop prints or some other behavior that you know only makes sense that infrastructure. Or maybe you actually are trying to manually port some, some fix. You've got a, a compiled application that the manufacturer's out of business and they've got an old open SSL and you need to try to port some patch from like a known existing code base into an existing binary, which is which can be very difficult. So there's a lot of reasons you might you might want to do it. In this particular case, I just always want to succeed at this check, right? You might also think of this as like a kind of a, a simple crack me. So patching, again, there's just a bunch of ways we can do it. One of the ways is we can just edit the raw hex itself. And I I to switch to assembly and I look and I see jump if they're not equal and it's going to jump over this great job you succeeded. So I know at this exact offset right here, I can just knock out these these two particular bytes, right? So I can take this address, hit Control Shift A, I'm gonna copy the address, and then I'm gonna go to the hex editor view. And actually, you notice it still already has those two bytes selected, which is nice. It maintains that selection. Oh, file lock is on. You notice the file lock is popping up at the bottom. So you gotta remember, if you're gonna edit the file, you disable the file lock by clicking on the bottom right. Oh, it helps if you're actually in the raw view. And let me test this. So let's do this. We're in the hex editor. We're gonna to go to raw view. And I cheated a little bit here. I could have actually figured out the address of the raw view. There's even a snippet that'll copy the address using the, the segment mappings, but I just kept it there. Now I should be able to type directly in my hex directly over this binary. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and save it. We're gonna save the file context only, challenge one dash raw bytes. And let's see if my hex setting skills are up to par. And I've succeeded, right? So obviously I can use Binary Ninja as a hex editor. That's the least interesting way probably to patch bytes, but it works. Here's another way that we can we can patch this particular binary, right? Like I knew x86 NOP off the top of my head was, was hex 90. A lot of people do, but maybe you don't know the NOP instruction for your particular architecture. So there's three ways that we can now patch the assembly just knowing that this particular branch needs to be NOPed, right? So one way is we can hit E. And if we hit E in the disassembly view, we can literally just retype that instruction. So I'm gonna turn that jump not equal into a NOP. Now a short jump not equal in x86 is two bytes. The NOP is one, but it's smart. Binary Ninja will pad this out and we'll replace both of those bytes with two byte NOPs, right? So that gets the exact same effect that we got by going to the hex editor, going to the address and typing 90s, but I could just hit E and edit the bytes there. I can also undo that. If I go to edit assemble, Here's another way that I can patch a binary. I can actually assemble like a blob of x86 or whatever the architecture is. I have no x86 assembly better, so I'd have a hard time doing it if it was a different architecture. I could paste in some larger chunk of assembly, put it in the assemble dialog and write that directly over that. It's also worth noting that I can trigger that via the command palette. So control P, assemble. I could assemble a different architecture. Maybe this is a virtual machine and it's got multiple architectures and I could assemble a different one at that particular offset and that would work fine as well. Although if I hit E and I just edit the line, it's only gonna do the native architecture of whatever that view already is. And that's another new feature. Another way you can edit by is select multiple lines, hit E, and you're gonna get the assemble dialog box for the multi-line selection, right? So you can edit a chunk of assembly instead of just triggering the assemble dialog over top. Like you can start with what was already there if you want to change things. That's, that's really nice. There's another set of patches we can do. There's a patch menu. And this actually gives us a lot of hints of ways that we can do these particular changes. So these are all the assembly level patches that we can do. You'll notice these are the ones I already showed. So I've shown you assemble. I've shown you edit current line. Just compile C source. We'll get to that in a little bit. And then we've got the ways that you can modify branches. So you can always branch, invert branch, or never branch. And you'll see I've got never branch marked to delete right now, right? So if there is a conditional thing, I can hit delete on it and it converts it to a NOP. So I've bound delete 
to convert to NOP. It just so happens that don't take the branch is equivalent to convert to NOP and the architecture actually knows this. And so the UI shows them both with the same hotkey, which is kind of nice, but I can hit delete. And all it's going to do is everything that I have selected, it's going to convert that to a NOP. Now, the really, really cool thing about this is that works at higher levels. I can actually be in the IL view and I could find something where it says printf format password is, and I can delete that whole line, right? Like I'm deleting the high level IL and it just is patching all of the associated instructions. So let's put like a reflection view and let's actually look at what happened there, right? So I've got the printf, but I've also got the load into EDI. And in other architectures, maybe I have some pushes or uh, putting things on the stack, depending on the calling convention. But when I actually knock this out, you'll see in this case, the EDI, it leaves alone. It doesn't need to do anything with that, but it knocks out the appropriate number of bytes for the call. And again, if I was on like 32 bit x86 and it was pushing arguments, it will actually fix up by like deleting all the stack pushes that were related to that too. So it's gonna knock out the appropriate instructions. It feels like a superpower to me to like just be reading some high level IL and then just hit delete on something and then save it and run it. So for example, I've gotten rid of the password prompt. Let's save this binary again and let's try that as well. Save the file contents and call it superpower. And I've got no prompt, right? It deleted the prompt. All right, so we've covered how you can use the hex editor. You can use the right click patch menu. A couple of the ones actually I didn't even show, right? So I talked about the other ones down here, but I didn't actually show invert branch and always branch, right? So the nice thing is if that's a jump not equal, I can invert the branch and turn it into a jump equal. And I can also say just never branch or always branch turn to a conditional jump. So you can really quickly modify control flow just using that, knowing nothing about the architecture. And then finally, you've got the C source code, right? So if I wanted to actually replace this whole function here, Right, and so I actually go to the, the, the start of the, the function, I'll go to the very beginning, and I'm gonna use the command palette, but again, you get this from the right click patch menu, you can get it from the edit menu as well. Compile C source has also got a hotkey. Control Alt C, let's, let's do this in main, and we're gonna return, right, this is our new function. We're gonna call this sure, x64 with no platform information. So I've basically just replaced this functionality with you know not a particularly interesting bit of code, but you can do much more complicated pieces of code and it's built right in the shell code compiler actually has its own help documentation. There's one last kind of related capability that, that I like to, to talk about though. It's not directly related to the patching itself. And we're going to do a window split to new window, right? So I'm going to take the same binary. I'm going to split it to the new window. The idea now is if I go to the, the top of the binary, so on the, the linear view in one side, and then on the hex, editor view on the other, I'm looking at the same data, right? But one of them has the bytes, you know, just as the hex view and the other one has it decomposed with the types that I've got on top of it. And so this is a little bit like, you know, O and O. So for example, let's take the entry point right here, right? And if I'm at the entry point and I modify the bytes of raw view. So the entry point was right here. And I start modifying values here. You notice as soon as I change the byte here, this actually changed where I'm now pointing, right? And so you can actually see the decomposition of bytes kind of as they happen with whatever types and structures you've got defined. It's just using the hex editor. We already talked about that, but I just think it's nifty to be able to see that kind of happen live as you change the decomposition. You can't do it the other way around. I can't like actually edit the type and have it work the other way yet. And of course, all of these are backed by the API, right? So literally every one of these things take an architecture and just convert some number of bytes to an op. All that is backed by the same API. If you can do it in the, the UI, you can do it in the API as well. Like it's the UI is just a sort of thin wrapper for the, the same API.